All right, so I've got three different layers here making up the head. I've got an ear from a bulldog. I've got an eye from a wild pig. I've got the head of a mouse, right? And right now, I haven't distorted these references at all. I've just cut them out, rotated them, and placed them using Command T. Now, the bat ear, the copyrighted material, if I want to make sure I can use that, move it up so I can see it. I'm going to lasso around with some overlap. I'm going to go ahead and get both of those ears for the time being. I might have to separate them out later. Then I hit Command J. It duplicates that. I can delete the source layer. I can move that layer up on top of everything else. And I can do that with command left bracket to move layers down, command right bracket to move layers up. Then I can hit command T to rotate it. If I hold down shift with command T, I can stretch it. If I right click within the transform box, I can warp it, I can flip it. So already I'm going to start, because this is copyrighted material, I'm already going to start changing its shape and size. And maybe give it a little bit of an S-curve, like we did with some of our shapes in exercise 2 using warp. Right? How else can I transform this so it's not recognizable? I can play with the color and the lighting. And I'll first use the overall direct adjustments that help with that. This is a very dramatic year. I can go to image, adjustments. This will directly change it as a rasterized object. And start with levels. Start with the midtones and either brighten them up or darken them. I'm going to darken the midtones a little bit. And I'm going to increase the highlights. I can see the spike in the histogram right at the edge of white. That's because of the white background. But the image itself, I can push that histogram pretty far. And still darken the midtones a little bit. So that's lighting. That's a pretty big difference from that to this. Now I want to play with its color. So I'm going to first change its overall color temperature with color balance. I'm going to shift it away from magenta. See how that changes it? More towards yellow and more towards red. So it gets a little pinkish. Then I can look at the highlights and I can push the highlights towards cyan. To kind of deaden it. Or I can push them a little towards red to make it look like there's more blood pulsing through. A little bit more towards green to kill the magenta. And then in the shadows, I want to push the blues. That's going to deepen the shadows and give it oh, come on, a cool tone. Okay, so that makes a big difference. Hopefully makes it less recognizable to its original photographer. Because no matter what, the bat's not getting any money from this. Right? Animals have terrible agents. Next, I can adjust the colors with hue saturation and actually change the overall spectral hue to make it warmer or cooler or bluer or redder. I kind of like the idea of it going a little more orange, but the problem is if you shift the hue too much, you lose the variation within it. And I like the, the difference in the vein color running through the ear. I can also play with just the intensity of the color, how saturated it is. So I'm, I'm gonna up that saturation. And I don't mess with the overall lightness and darkness too much because that's better handled through levels. 
All right, so that's a pretty big difference. Now I'm going to Command T and shrink this down. If I want to have a better idea about where to place it, I can take its opacity down for the time being to kind of layer it up with the ears I already have. Then I can take its opacity back up. And before I'm finished transforming it, I can warp it to make this back ear fit a little bit better in the perspective of the pose I have. So if I'm going to use these, these crazy ears, I might as well use both of them. All right, now this kind of works, but it doesn't use that bulldog ear really at all. And it's looking a little bit more like a bunny than my creature. So what do I do? I can start erasing away. This is already rasterized because it was selection that was duplicated from a smart layer. Because it was shot on a white background, very easy to just use magic wand with contiguous. I accidentally didn't check contiguous. And look, if you don't hit contiguous, it's going to find the whites within the image, too. And I don't want to delete those. So I check that contiguous box with the magic wand. And I click on the whites. And then I can just hit delete. And I will cut it out very sharply. Even a little too sharply. So then I can select the empty space. And remember that you can soften your magic wand selection by going to select and mask. And I'm just going to really try to control this because I haven't mastered this new tool yet. And I'm just going to say feather by two pixels. And it should show me what's selected and what's not selected with this transparency. You see how it's kind of making it gray. So that white edge is now not, uh, it's, ah. <laughs> what's gray is not selected. So now that white edge feels pretty affected. So I'm just going to say OK. And now, I'll zoom in so you can see it. Now when I delete, hopefully it will feather. There we go. And just by feathering a few pixels, I should probably do a little bit more than, than two, I can get rid of that white halo in a really controlled way. The more I hit delete, the more it will feather it. See that softness to it? So I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to feather it by four pixels. And you can always type it in, too. Four. And then hit OK. And then delete. So now that white, that white edge is gone. For the most part. And so those ears are nicely cut out. What about this side of the ear? Well, I can always use my lasso, and I can I have a three feather, a three pixel feather on it. I'll change that to just two. Depends on the texture I'm cutting out. I'll use my tablet. And I'll follow along the edge of this ear. And because it's organic, I can always kind of make it up as well. Select everything I want to delete. I'll zoom in so you can see what that feather does. Hit delete. You can see that softened edge it gives me. That matches. OK, now how do I transition on the inside? Well, I'm going to use my eraser. I'm going to use it at 100% opacity, just like we did with the landscape. I'm going to make it. 0% hardness, because I want to just get rid of this hard seam. I'm 
0% hardness, not 100% hardness. And make it big enough to blend. So I get rid of those hard edges so I start to see that bulldog's ear underneath. And see the top of the mouse's head underneath. All this is good. And you start to get a sense of how we're going to blend in the rest of it, right? So let me finish off the head. I'm first going to mess with the colors of my base layer. I want it to match more the coloration of my, my pig there. That's the color I like. So I select the mouse layer underneath and I'm gonna do direct adjustments first. First levels. Remember not to, to use the side sliders too much or you start losing pixel definition. But the middle slider is pretty safe. I'm just gonna darken it, darken it a little bit. Then color balance, gonna warm it up in the midtones. Bring a little bit more red into it. And then in the shadows, bring a little bit of blue into it. And then in the highlights, bring a little bit more yellow and red into it. So it already starts to help blending. And then hue saturation. I'm just going to up the saturation just a tiny bit. Keep the lightness where it is and just play with the hue slider. See if I'm on the right track and I am. All right, next. The pig. What if I want to make that pig's eye bigger? Well, I can hit Command T. I can right click within that box. And I can warp it. And I'm just going to stretch it on this side. Since the back of the head is pretty well placed. I'm just going to stretch that eye until it's it's really visible. I like the the red and black that's in the eye. That's a little bit more interesting to me than just the the plain black that's in the mouse's eye. That's why I like to create my creatures out of my creatures heads out of at least 3 different composites. And then I can use my direct adjustments but this is the, the photo with the coloration I like quite a bit. So it's, it's pretty much right on. You see how even that histogram is. The color balance, I might take a little bit of warmth away, but not too much. And then the hue saturation I think is, is right on, but I could play with its intensity. Maybe just take it down a notch. Okay, now I use my eraser. Soft edged, 100%, big enough to blend, and I get rid of that hard edge. Especially important with fur. Fur is not a hard substance. Now, once I've gotten rid of the hard edge, I might want to use that top of the, the crown of the head. So I need to use my feathered lasso and just really softly cut out this background from this reference photo. But don't worry about cutting out too much background because you don't know what's going to get overlapped by other layers yet. Okay, so far so good. I can also take out the white behind the mouse. It's just really nice that it's white, so it's easy to delete. But remember, with the magic wand, it's going to leave that halo. So I can go to Select and Mask. 